Hello and welcome to our podcast. My name is Anthony and I am a senior technical expert within the insurance and pensions supervision function. And I'm here today with my colleagues, Jennifer and Karen from the same function to make an important announcement to the insurance industry and in particular to the sector of the insurance intermediaries. The insurance intermediaries are a very important sector for the Maltese financial services and are key players in the insurance industry. Our jurisdiction prides itself with a very strong regulatory framework. And today, we are going to introduce the new application and passporting notification forms for the intermediaries. But now, I would go uh, straight to the point and leave the microphone to my colleagues uh, who were at the core of such process and uh, to walk us through uh, the salient points of this project. Hi, Kellen. Um, I would start by the application forms. Uh, why have you decided to revise the chapter one? Okay, yes. So um, the IPSAU team has decided to revise schedule to chapter one in order to align the application forms for the insurance intermediaries to those of the insurance undertakings. Basically, the introduction of the new application forms in respect of insurance undertakings has made the application process more efficient, both for the applicants and for the authority. Therefore, a similar approach will be adopted with regards to insurance intermediaries. And what are the salient changes uh, that you have uh, uh, implemented in this application form? Yes, the IPSAU team has included all the information which is deemed necessary in order to fully assess an application for the enrollment of an insurance intermediary. This will make the process more efficient and thus eliminate the exchange of unnecessary correspondence between the applicant and the authority in order to gather the required information. Moreover, we have also introduced a form for the approval of approved persons for tied insurance intermediaries. Previously, such information was submitted by the applicant by means of an application or a letter, wherein everyone used to include information that whatever they deemed sufficient. Now, with the introduction of this new application form, the authority will only gather the required and necessary information. And what's in it for the industry? And how this will help the MFSA um, in carrying its supervisory mission. Yes, so for the industry, we hope to introduce a more efficient process in line with the authorization charter. On the other hand, uh, these new application forms, the IPSA team will be in a better position to carry out its assessment since the application should be more complete once we receive them and they should only include the necessary details. Fantastic. And so we have new application forms and do we have a new process? So, No. So basically the introduction of these new um, um, forms will not change the application process, but obviously it's just going to make it more efficient. The application process will continue to be in line with the authorization charter of the MFSA. Brilliant. And now we can go to the passporting notification forms. Jennifer and I have worked extensively and hand in hand <laughs> to revise uh, such notification forms. But Jennifer, um, did we really need new passporting notification forms for intermediaries? Well, yes, we did. Um, the passporting notifications we had for intermediaries were very basic. They only gathered the basic information required by the BOS. And now we aligned them to the same notification uh, um, forms for, in, for undertakings. And uh, what are the additional questions for? So the forms have been updated to include all the information we require for a TARA assessment as soon as we receive a notification from an, under, from an intermediary. The template was used as a basis for these, temp, for these new forms and further questions, which we usually use to, to engage with the license holders to gather more information, have been now included in these forms in order to be able to, to perform a holistic assessment of the, of the notification of the cross-border business which is being proposed. We have also introduced another two new forms now, one in relation to changes to passporting and another one which will be used for the discontinuation of passporting. The changes um, form is to be used for any changes which will be occurring in an already approved cross-border activity, such as the addition of a new class or the removal of a class. 
Um, whilst the discontinuation form is only to be used when a license holder wants to terminate the notificate, the passporting business within a particular territory. So basically we are going to have uh, new forms, we are going to have more questions, but since we are um, talking about intermediaries, um, will you follow a principle of proportionality on your assessment? Yes, obviously the assessment which we will be carrying out won't be as thorough as that for under Undertakings. The cross-border activity for an intermediary will be assessed on the kind of business which is being proposed, the kind of passporting which will be proposed, whether it's a freedom of establishment or freedom of services, and also, most importantly, the risks presented by the, the jurisdiction which is being proposed by the intermediary. I would like to thank Karen and Jennifer for the sterling job. Thank, thank you for the informative session. And I would like to conclude this podcast by reminding the industry that it's very extremely important that all the forms are duly completed in all the relevant sections and that the forms will be mandatory from the 15th of August onwards, since that day only these forms will be accepted. And these forms will need also to be submitted via the LH portal. For any questions or doubt, obviously do not hesitate to contact us. Goodbye.